Welcome back. Here I am to tell more childhood ceiling fan stories. So, not too long ago, I posted a video of a white 52-inch Hunter Original ceiling fan. And in that video, I told the story of how that is a big childhood ceiling fan for me, because there was a grocery store very close to my house that had about 16 of them installed throughout. But then they were taken down because of course they were, and I was unable to get any of them because either A, I was too young, or B, the people in charge of the construction ignored me. And in that video, I did mention, I believe also, that Hunter Originals are one of the most common vintage fans to my area. And the stories I'm about to tell can prove that, as there are a handful of other instances of Hunter Originals in my area that were indeed childhood fans. The first instance would be an old Ace hardware store that was just down the road from my house. It was a great hardware store, you know, mom and pop shop owned, all that stuff. And they, uh, you know, they were sponsored by Ace, or they like bought an Ace franchise package, whatever you would call that. And that's like how they got their product shipments and all that. And in that store, over the counter, there was a brown four-blade Hunter original. I believe it was not R&M as it had the uh, standard Hunter bracket. Like, not the C ones, but the newer kind. And it was always running on low speed, and it would always wobble back and forth. And that fan was like that every time I went to that hardware store. As a little kid, Dad would always say, like, oh, want to go to the hardware store? I'd say, sure. We'd go to the hardware store, and when we checked out, I always liked to look up at that fan, spinning around nice and slowly, wibble-wobbling along. And it was like that every single time. And funny enough, one time I didn't go to the hardware store with my dad. My dad actually told me, oh, hey, funny, funny story, um, the fan was actually turned off today. But other than that one time, just based off of his word, every other time it was running. Now, of course, that hardware store closed down years ago, probably in, I want to say, 2005 or 6. Long, long time ago, so that fan is long gone, unfortunately. And, uh... No, not sure what happened to it. It probably just got thrown out when the place was renovated and turned into a CrossFit, I believe. Not entirely sure. So, that's one instance. Another instance would be a diner not too far away from me either. Now, this diner had six Black Hunter originals in it, all five-blade with wood blades. I believe it was either pecan or oak. There was one on a long down rod, right when you walked in, and you know, like the area where the host or hostess, like, guides you to a table. There was a long corridor of booths that, that, that had two on standard length down rods. And then there was a bar off to the left side of the diner that had three, also on standard down rods, but the ceiling was a little higher up. And those were the first Black Hunter originals I ever saw, and I thought they were really cool, as... White and black are two of my favorite ceiling fan finishes, because black looks really cool, and white also looks fairly cool, but I'm also just really nostalgic for it. So, these fans, you know, every time my family went to this diner, I loved to look at them. Then the diner fell on hard times. Uh, the original owners, I think, either went bankrupt or just, like, business wasn't coming in, something to that effect. So, the owners changed and the name changed. And then it went on a little longer like that, and then those owners fell out. And then more owners came in, and then probably only a couple weeks after that, it shut down. I guess they just didn't get enough business, and from there it was converted into a pharmaceutical building. Again, I tried to contact them, tried to get the fans out. No luck. So, unfortunately, those fans are probably gone too. Now, one more story about Hunter Originals is Another restaurant, this is a pub very close to my house, had four Antique Brass Reverse Air Robbins and Myers originals back in the day. They were very cool. The brass was not very oxidized from what I remember. They were in good condition for a restaurant that allowed smoking up until I want to say about 2003 or 4, and had probably been there since the early 80s, since, you know, the time of the fans. And I remember every single one of them 
had a single fitter with the round globe, and the round globe was painted to look like a baseball, as it was, you know, like a sports pub where, like, you know, like buddies would hang out to, like, watch the ball game or whatever. So I remember they had four of those, and then in the back section where booths were, I believe they had two Emerson Northwinds back there. Or, like, the small 29-inch ones, whatever. Is that called the Northwind? I'm not entirely sure, but... Yeah, like, little 29-inch, 30-inch Emerson fans. Something to that effect. Then, and I want to say 2009 or so, so this would have been when I was too young to collect fans, unfortunately, they renovated the restaurant and replaced all the fans. And they replaced them, two of them, with Hampton Bay Farmingtons, and uh, the other two with Hunter something, I don't know what... They look like Hunter Stratford's, but they don't have the dome lights, so I don't know what they're called. And then the Emerson Northwinds in the back got replaced with newer Emersons. I wouldn't know the model name. Also, small Emersons, but again, or maybe they're not Emerson. Maybe they're like Westinghouse or something, but again, small fans got replaced. Boo-hoo. And that one possibly stings the most, just because Antique Brass, Robbins and Myers, Reverse Air good condition, four of them, like, that would have been awesome. And sure, they might have reeked a smoke a little bit, but, I mean, every two out of three fans I get smells like smoke. So it really wouldn't have been a big deal. Now, some of those stories may come across as dour, as all of those Hunter originals were lost and are not in collector hands, and their parts are probably just rotting away in landfills today. Well, Hunter Originals are made of cast iron, so I don't know. Who knows? Maybe, like, maybe they repurposed them. Maybe the electrician that took them out, like, donated them or repurposed them somehow. Who knows? I have heard of some electricians that do that. I can only hope. But as a more uplifting story, there are a few places around me that do still have good quality fans installed. One of which is another grocery store near me, that currently has three Emerson heat fans in it. These are the only heat fans I have ever seen in the wild, as I'm sure all the other ones have already gotten picked up by the other fan collectors local to me. Um, according to another fan collector nearby me, the, they were originally brown, and there was originally five of them. I do remember when there were five of them, but I do not ever remember them being brown. Uh, currently they are white, so I suspect they were painted white. And I do remember, yeah, I remember originally there were five of them. And the two that ended up getting replaced were never turned on. They were the heat fan with the pull chain. So I don't know if, like, the bearings ceased up or if they just needed to pull the chain and it would turn on. I don't know. But those two ended up getting replaced, which makes me wonder if perhaps they did have something wrong with them or if they just were too dumb to pull the chain, but hopefully the former. And then the two that were replaced were replaced with some modern industrial. I couldn't tell you the name. And then, like, three more industrials were also put in. However, the three heat fans that remain, they're still there, and they're still kicking. So, long live the heat fans, and hopefully if they do take those three out, I can get a hold of them. I really hope. So, those are some stories about that. Now, here's another more positive and uplifting story about a childhood fan I was actually able to get. And this one comes from a residential area, not a commercial area. It would be a Kenroy Spinner fan. In fact, if we take a little field trip here, it is the Kenroy Spinner ceiling fan installed right here. This right here is a huge childhood fan for me. This fan was originally installed in a family friend's house. I believe I did make a video briefly of this fan on my old channel. If I find the video, I may leave a link to it in the description. As this friend's house, I always like going over to their house because even though they had like 10 uh, Labrador dogs, or like Black Lab, Chocolate Lab, Yellow Lab, like those, like and those were kind of scary to little kid me, I also like, to go, I like going to their house because they had a ton of ceiling fans, I believe seven or eight. However, all the fans in their house, this one I always thought was the coolest. This was my first top-mounted spinner that I ever saw, 
and I thought the design was just so, so cool, so slick, so rad, however you want to say it. The fact that the blades, instead of mounting to the bottom of the motor, they mount to the top, and when the fan spins, the whole motor spins with it, like even the vents, I just always found that so cool. I always thought that was just so funny to see, like the whole motor spinning, or really the whole housing spinning, I guess. I just always thought that was really neat. As, as a result, whenever I went over to their house, I always liked seeing this fan. Now, as you can imagine, because I like seeing this fan so much, I always wanted to see it running. However, I was never able to do that until I got a hold of it. The reason being, this fan was originally installed in a very awkward location. It was installed above the landing platform of the staircase. It would basically be the equivalent of, if you look at the staircase right here, see the landing platform way down there? It would basically be the equivalent if the fan was installed right up there. As how their house was designed was, you would come in the front door, and off to the right was a hallway that led over to the kitchen. If you made a left, there was a short hallway that led out to the family room. Now down the straight hallway, there was another left that had the stairs going up. Then halfway up was a landing platform that overlooked the uh, family room off to the left side. And then if you did a 180, would be the other half of the stairs that went up. And then you had, you know, like the hallway up there. And this midpoint, this midpoint platform, the fan was installed above that. And this was like all open, there weren't any walls or anything, so bottom line, the fan was very high off the ground. It, it, it definitely would have made for one of those, the original install would have definitely made for one of those ceiling fans in unexpected places Facebook posts. So, because it was so high up, it had, and it was not on a wall control, it was just on a regular toggle switch, so it had really long chains attached running all the way down to the ground. Not all the way down to like, you know, like eye level basically, maybe like five feet off the ground or something, something like that. Now, the light chain had these, you know, like little metal beads, you know, like standard. The fan chain, however, had string. You can probably already see where this is going. So, as I was told by this family, Apparently what happened is, so you know, like there was string tied along the chain up here, running all the way down. So supposedly what happened is someone was down in the living room or family room and they had a stuffed animal. And their objective was to get the stuffed animal to the upstairs hallway. So they threw it towards the upstairs hallway from the family room, and apparently it hit the chain and the string snapped. I always thought that was a little weird. That is until I threw my backpack and yanked the chain out of my Mauve Delta II, but that's beside the point. So, yeah, m must have been a big stuffed animal is all I can say. So yeah, it snapped the chain, or the string rather. The chain up here was, oops, the chain up here was still intact, but the string had snapped like all the way up, so you couldn't reach it. And something I was always a little annoyed by is that instead of just simply getting out the ladder and fixing it by attaching either another string or an actual beaded chain, they just left it. And the fan, as a result, was not turned on for probably about 10 to 15 years. I always wanted to see this fan running, but because of that, I was never ever able to. And it kind of drove me nuts. Eventually, though, they did say that they were... I, I mean, I would always ask them about the fan. They would always, like, tell the same story. Like, oh, yeah, you know, like, there was a string there, and it broke, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, so, eventually one time they told me, like, oh, yeah, we've actually been considering taking that fan down and putting up something new. So, if we do that, you can have it. So, I was very excited by that. And lo and behold, it happened, and they gave me the fan. And here it is. And now, because it's not super high off the ground, I can run it. And ain't she a beaut. It is always nice vindication when you're able to get the exact fan. Not 
a duplicate, but the exact same fan from your childhood. This fan does put out pretty good air. It blows good air. The blades are a uh, solid teak, I believe, or maybe solid walnut. It's a well-built fan for sure, as some spinners are not that good of quality, but this one certainly is, so... Yeah. And this is actually the only spinner motor fan in my entire fan room currently. All the other ones are stacked, so... So yes, that is another one of my biggest childhood fans. And with that, I will wrap this video up. I may tell more childhood ceiling fan stories later, though the ones I covered in both this and the previous part are most of the heavy hitter ones. So I thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.